Commission of the Southampton Town Board to order on this 9th day of January 2020. Please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Sunday, would you please call the roll? Certainly. Supervisor Schneiderman? Here. Councilman Ross? Councilman Martel? Here. Councilman Bouvier? Here. Councilman Skiba? Present. All right. So, uh, welcome to our first work session of the year. It's going to be a busy year. If you heard my uh, inaugural address, so I talked about lots of different things that uh, are ahead for the year. So, uh, we're going to have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Good things. Um, so, uh, today, we are going to talk about sustainability and uh, gas leaf blowers and helium balloons, but before we do that, we want to allow the clerk to go ahead and publish the agenda. So let's go through the agenda for the next meeting, which is January 14th, next week. It'll occur um, at 1 p.m. It's an afternoon meeting. It'll be uh, right here, I believe, in the same room, right here in this room, 1 p.m. January 14th. We have uh, a couple public hearings. Uh, first one is on acquiring lands of Daphne Trachis uh, as trustee of the Lewis Trachis Irrevocable Trust and Trachis Realty LLC, Hampton Bays, amends the CPF plan. Uh, second one considers uh, amending the Town of Southampton Community Preservation Plan, considering the acquisition of lands of 3D Associates, Inc., and Captree Group uh, LLC in Remsenburg. Uh, and amends the CPF management plan. That's that large. I don't. Want, I want to say 160 acres. 164. I think 100. Right. Yeah, 160 plus acre property over there in uh, Spionk. Uh, used to be. We used to call it Woodfield Gables or something, right? Yeah. Um, number three, third public hearing is to consider the transfer lands of Suffolk County in Riverside pursuant to General Municipal Law Section 72H and amends the CPF management and stewardship plan. 72H is a provision of state law that allows the county to transfer tax default properties to the town for various purposes, usually affordable housing, though this piece, I believe we're looking for water quality. Uh, it's along the uh, Riverwoods property, the mobile home facility there in uh, the Riverside area. And the fourth public hearing is consider landmark designation of the Topping Rainer House, 121 Road in West Hampton. So that's for landmark designation. All right, any questions about the public hearings? All right, so let's, uh, hearing none, let's move on to resolutions. 33313 accepts the award uh, and authorizes the supervisor to execute any and all documents for the Empire State Economic Development Grant Award for the Shinnecock Commercial Fishing Dock Rehabilitation. 33307 accepts award and authorizes the supervisor to execute any and all documents for New York State Water Infrastructure Improvement Act of 2017 Grant Award. Right, I'd like to be added as co-sponsor, so sorry. Madam Clerk, would you please add John as a co-sponsor on 33307? And um, Ms. Lovesett asked me if I read her okay. resolutions. ID 33315, authorization of the Department of Senior Services <coughs> to make application and supervisor to sign any and all documents pertaining to the 2020 Suffolk County Title for Title Title Three E Adult Care Center. 33312 authorizes an agreement <coughs> with the Town of Southampton Housing Authority to administer the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program. Again, I'd like to be added as co-sponsor. So you got that? Okay. All right. Come and jump. 33324, authorized the purchase of heavy-duty parts, uh, Sterling, Mack, and Ford from Suffolk County contract. Town Board Resolution ID 33316, authorized the supervisor to sign a 2020 contract with Suffolk County officer Office for the Aging to Receive Senior Citizen Nutrition Program funding. Town Board Resolution ID 333319, authorized the purchase of food products and related supplies from Omnia Partners with Premier Incorporated with distribution through U.S. Foods. 33329, authorizes the purchase of law enforcement, safety equipment, and supplies from the Albany County with Galls LLC. 
33326 authorizes the purchase of, of maintenance, repair, and operations MRO supplies, parts, equipment, material, and related services from the Omnia Partners contract with W.W. Granger. Town Board Resolution ID 33325 authorizes the purchase of milk and dairy products from New York State OGS and Crema Land Dairies LLC. So, you know, the reason why we do this is just to make sure everybody knows what's on the agenda, make sure the public knows what's on the agenda, and it allows for the town board, if they have any questions about a bill, um, to, uh, to, to get any clarifications that they might need. And if we, if we notice an error, we can, we can sort of change it before we make it public. It's not just to show that we can read these things. So please speak up if you have any questions. 33320 authorizes the purchase of tires from the Suffolk County contract with Barnwell House of Tires. 33318 authorizes the supervisor to sign 2020 village agreement with for home improvement inspection services. Town Board Resolution 33302 <coughs> authorizes the supervisor to sign an agreement with North Fork Express. Town Board Resolution 3311 co-sponsored with Councilman Schironi is to authorize the supervisor to execute a 2020 contract extension for appraisals with Lawrence uh, Indemnity Indemn Consulting Corporation, R.J. Matsua Matuza and Associates, Carol Sweeney, MAI -A 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 and Brunswick Appraisal Corporation. Yeah, not missing an action, but MAI. MAI, yeah. yeah <laughs> it came too easily. All right, 33317 authorizes the supervisor to execute 2020 cooperative agreement with neighboring villages in a town to provide fire inspection services. I'd like to be added as a co sponsor to that. Sunday, you got that? Thank you. 33301 authorizes the supervisor to execute a 2020 contract with Aquarius Capital Company to provide actuarial services to the town. Tell me, John. Okay. 33308 authorizes the supervisor to execute a contract extension with L.K. McLean Associates PC for professional services to be provided for a highway department for various townwide projects. 33310 authorizes the supervisor to execute a contract extension with D&D Engineers and Architects PC for the preparation of a 10 year capital plan for the Hampton Bays Water District. Yeah, let me just explain, I believe, what this is, because we've, we've already done this. Uh, no, it's just an extension yeah. of the same contract. There's no additional money. At some point, though, we do, uh, there should be a resolution for $1,500. Uh, that's what it's costing to have them do this community meeting that we're going to be doing in early February discussing the plan so I don't know that if that's in that well, number or not exceed, not to exceed 33,000 where do you see not in the amount it says 48.5 mm -hmm. uh, yeah I'm sorry so okay. I don't know if that's already included in that 48.5 it may be we'll, we'll get clarification all right, all right uh, Tommy John you're next yeah 33309 authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract extension with Roadwork Construction Corporation for maintenance, installation, and repair of water mains hydrants within the Hampton Bays Water District. 33303 authorizes the supervisor to execute a contract with Cornell Cooperative Extension of Suffolk County to partner with the town for passive permeable reactive barriers. I'd like to be added as co sponsor, please. Can we add John as a co sponsor? Got it. Um, is this, I think we're going to be one at Iron Point. Is it, is, yeah, there was uh, some pit. issues with the, uh, there's actually, they're finding that there's higher levels of water there than expected. Higher levels of water. There's more water intrusion in the area where they were originally going to put it, so it's up in the air right now. Or I think there was less nitrogen than they thought, too. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, there's more flushing than expected in the. Oh, okay. So it's more diluted. Mm -hmm. So they felt that that was not a good spot to test it. Yeah. That's what I understand. Okay. So what is this doing? Uh, I guess they're going to continue to try to find a spot? Yeah, this, this allows the contract to continue. For another year? Okay. Uh, 
Town Board Resolution ID 33306, co-sponsored with Councilman Schiavone, to authorize the supervisor to execute a contract with L.K. McLean Associates PC for professional services to be provided for historic projects for the Community Preservation Fund. Can I just rewind for one second? So on uh, the permeable reactive barrier, just for Rick's edification, you may already know, but it's sort of a... Uh, it's a trench with wood chips, that's so when the groundwater passes through before it reaches the water body, uh, there's biological processes that can occur to knock down sure. the, uh, the nitrogen levels. Is there additional vegetation also on that? We'll start with it. That um, controls the amount of oxygen that's available to either make it anaerobic or aerobic process in order to convert the nitrates to gaseous nitrogen. That's sort of the process. I don't know about like vegetation above it. Vegetation. Like in it in though, it, yeah. it's, it's not, no, not really. It's just basically a trench. And it's got, you know, sand and sawdust or wood chips. Wood chips. Um, carbon. Organic material th that, you know. It's, it's the carbon source for the chemical reaction okay. to make the conversion. Within an oxygen free environment. That, so it. Uh, to a degree. To a degree. John's the engineer. <laughs> I was a chemist. <laughs> All right, so where are we? Uh, 33300? Uh, Did we do that one? 33306. Uh, okay. Yes, we did do that. 33300 authorized the supervisor to execute an extension with Jackson Dodds for invasive vegetative removal on town properties. All right, uh, 33314 authorizes the supervisor to sign a new lease agreement for 38 Little Plains Road. That's right across the street where we have the, uh, the parking and the storage. Um, time we go. 33304 authorizes the supervisor to sign any and all documents with Rec Pro software from <coughs> uh, C Systems Incorporated for Parks and Recreation Programs registrations. Uh, okay, 33299. Uh, 33299 uh, <coughs> declares items as surplus items. Uh, 333262, this is 2020 notice to bidders for repair and install or installation of sidewalks or an install sidewalks. Um, 33292, 2020 notice to bidders for farming at Sarah Field, South County tax map number 900 69-2-13.5. What is that? Now, Sayer Field, isn't that where we have, like, a fairground? Or is that something we lease out for farming? Does anybody know? Sayer Park is where we have the... Oh, Sayer Park yeah. is the fairground? Yeah. And yeah. the field is just an owned property that we lease out to farmers? I believe there is a difference. Do we, uh... We, we don't farm at Sayer Park. <coughs> Do we put any restrictions on the farmland that we lease in terms of it. that it has to be under a an IPM or or maybe organically farmed? Do we know? No, not generally. Not generally. If you ask for it, we can. We can do that. Because I, you know, I, I think if it's a yeah, Lisa's out sick today. And I think she was going to weigh in on this yeah. to answer that question. If it's for, if to me, if it's near a body of water you know, surface waters, then we ought to at least be considering putting some limitations and, you know, trying to promote organic farming. But uh, this is going to be RFP, so we can put that in. We, back. Could, we could, but I'm not, you know, let's take a look at where it is. Uh, I'm not sure necessarily every piece of farmland should be subject to that limitation, but certainly some, some should be. Um, you know, if there's a, a lot of houses near it, you know, the spraying of pesticides, you know, can impact the, uh, residential properties or if there's a school near it. All right, let's move on to the next one. 33321, uh, 2019 request for proposals for Riverside Community Wide Brownfields Assessment Program, Hazardous Substances and Petroleum Waste. Would like to be added as co sponsor, please? Something you got there? Yes. 33257, bond authorization of 300000 for town police computer system upgrades. Um, that's going to need four votes. We have a roll call. Uh, 33266, again, uh, four vote roll call. 
I can't uh, wait to be added. It's going this to is a bond authorization for 200000 for various park improvements. These are all in the capital budget. Uh, 33268, bond authorization of 525000, 525000 for various for improvements to various town six, six, buildings. Six, eight, eight. Yes, please. Uh, 33271, another bond resolution, uh, 210,000 for townwide fueling station upgrades. Uh, 33272, uh, bond authorization, 100,000 for townwide bridge reconstruction. It's not a lot of money for bridges. Um, barely going to paint two of them. Yeah. It might be minor, like culvert thousands. Uh, as provided in the 2020 adopted budget. Mm -hmm. uh, 33273 is a bond resolution for half a million for highway equipment. 33274, bond authorization of 80,000 for bulkheads. Uh, 33275 is a bond authorization 200,000 for town wide culverts. Uh, 33278, uh, bond for 250000 for townwide drainage. 33279 uh, is bond authorization 2150000 for road improvements. 33280 is a $100,000 bond for sidewalks. 33282, $250,000 bond for waste management equipment. I'd like to be added to that. Please. So do you got that? Uh, 33283 is a $100,000 bond for beach improvements. Same addition, thank you. So these are all from the capital budget. We do these in the beginning of the year so that uh, Len can then go ahead and prepare the, the bid. They all get grouped together and we do one bond offering. So uh, 33285 is a bond authorization of half a million dollars for Riverside Maritime Park. Uh, 33259, bond authorization of 125000 for various equipment at police department. Uh, 33261, the bond authorization of 205000 for hazmat truck. I'd like to be added as a co-sponsor to that. So you can take care of that. 33263 is a bond authorization of 325000 for various uh, IT projects. 33265, bond authorization of 110 for parks equipment. Would like to be added, please. And I'll try to get um, the controller here and maybe Christine Fenton for this meeting. Janice, could we request that they're present if we have any questions about these bonds? So if there's any questions about these bonds. All right, uh, 33270, bond authorization of 190,000 for creation of bike lanes and construction of a multi-use path th through Good Ground Park. I'd like to be added, please. Uh, you know, it's a $750,000 project, but I guess that's our portion. Yeah, I think it's actually more than that. It is? Closer to a million. Really? So that would be close to 20% of the project? Mm -hmm. well, it's 190000 is provided for the 2020 adopted budget. Right. Well, sometimes we have to lay out rate. money, the, yeah. depending on the program, sometimes we have to lay out the money and then get reimbursed, yeah, I'm not sure it's but imagined. this doesn't sound like it. It says uh, pay a portion of a $945,000 estimated maximum cost. So this is our portion. Sounds like about, you know, 20% of the number. All right, uh, 33284 is bond authorization, 125000 for comprehensive plan action items. We might need Janice to discuss this. It's for, it's for planning studies. Um, 33286, bond authorization of 3.5 million for the Southampton Ambulance Building. I'd like to be added, please. We've been discussing that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
33240 amends the 20 through 24 capital budget for townwide heavy equipment. 33241 amends the 20 through 24 capital budget to remove capital project Emma Rose Elliston Park. Uh, 33242 amends the 2024 capital budget for park improvements. I'd like to be added to that, please. Um, all right. That's over by SYS, the North Sea yep. Park. So mm -hmm. we're going to be building some new facilities there. Uh, 33243 amends the 2020 Hampton Bay's Water District fee schedule. Um, so this is what... Let me explain this because we passed the budget that they call for um, the fire department paying a fee for the fire hydrants, which is typical in a water district. It's, it's ultimately, I, I guess, a wash because the fire department would then have to tax for the money, um, and then it goes to the Hampton Bay's Water District, which then wouldn't have to tax for the money. It's the exact same taxpayers. Um, the problem with it is that the, um, the budget's already, we put it in our budget, but the fire department didn't put it in theirs. So they don't have the money to pay for the hydrants because they didn't collect it in the taxes. So um, we'll, what we'll have to do then is, if we're going to do this, do it next year. we let the fire department know so that they can, uh, when they put out the tax bills, that we'll have the adequate money collected to then transfer over to the water district. Uh, it is typical that a water district will charge the fire district. They're not always the exact same uh, property boundaries, property tax boundaries. So, but they are here. It's the same taxpayers. So it's it's not going to make a difference per se. But we won't have that revenue in the water district, um, unfortunately. You know, and you know, as we go through all the, a year where we're doing quite a bit of capital improvements. Um, all right, 33296 amends the 20 through 24 capital budget for CPF East Quag Water Main Extension. Um, 33297 amends the 19, 2019 adopted budget for various departments. So that's more housekeeping there. 33126 uh, designates the Topping Rainer House 121 South. Road as Hampton as a historic landmark. That's the subject of a public hearing that'll occur earlier that day. Three to be I'm, I'm sorry, I'd like to be added to that. Okay. Thank you. So, is that is that that boathouse or no? Is that's a different one? No, that no. No, that was part of that Rainer property right. that we were acquiring. That's mm -hmm. not the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. It will, I'm sure it'll be explained to us at the public hearing. 33174 authorizes Community Preservation Fund tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyer's exemption for William C. Uh, Margaritas and Al Ali Glenn McGrath. So that's something that uh, we're allowed to do for first time home buyers to, uh, uh, to exempt them or give them a refund on their uh, CPF tax. Uh, just, just for a note on the previous one, I think you were referring to Tupper Boat House. No, no, I was no. thinking recently we acquired uh, a property in. It's right the down the street. From the there, it's down. It's, it's not on the that. same. It's right. not the same it's one. Yeah, the remember same. the it's owner just a came block here away and said, "Don't tear down the boat house. It's historic." Right. right. It's literally I, a block down the street. Okay. okay. Literally, hanging in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, three, 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 two, two sets twenty uh, two thousand. 20 meeting date for the commissioners of the Hampton, Hampton Bay's Water District, uh, Thursday, May 14th, and Thursday, October 8th. We're also going to do that special meeting, Janice, in February, first week of February, February 5th. February 5th. So that'll be also kind of a special meeting of the of the water commissioners where we'll present the capital plan, the 10 year capital plan in Hampton Bay's to the community. And if we feel there's a need for additional meetings, uh, as uh, water commissioners, because that is a hat that we all wear uh, in the Hampton Bays area, we'll, we'll do we'll do it as necessary. Um, hopefully, the two meetings will be sufficient. All right, three three. three oh, sorry, Tommy, you right. Three 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 two seven. Uh, this is a modification of the service award program for volunteer ambulance districts. This is the low sap points for codifying between our four ambulance districts. It's. Um, 
So this is based on changes at the state level, or? It is. Um, so the town has has a, a policy toward uh, those districts, so that those districts absolutely, and, and it's it goes along with uh, New York State municipal law. Right. Yeah, because we we can't award points that the state doesn't allow. So we have a program that parallels the state's program. There's no financial impact. Right. So I, I guess there there might be some uh, some variations in terms of how many points we can decide to award for different things. As commissioners of the ambulance districts, we, we're uh, codifying this in in our code, code. to uh, make it uniform throughout our ambulance districts, as opposed to the districts themselves creating their own policy. Right, and we have I know we've issued some guidance through the controls office to right. these ambulance. Uh, More consistency yeah. to make sure that you know certain things aren't being given credit that the state doesn't allow for credit. It's it's basically a pension program, and you have to get I think 50 points in a given year to be able to qualify for I think it's 20 dollars a month per year of service. That's correct. After you put in 20 years or um, 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. 10 or 20? 10 years. Uh, you can vest within 10 years. Um, but for full uh, payout, it's it's 20, as I right. understand it. And I think there's a max on it too. There's an upper end, but it, it's a you know it's a decent mm -hmm. way of rewarding our volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, they put in a lot of time, a lot of training. Yeah. Uh, and of course, they're there when you need save them. a lot of lives. Yes. You know, and the money that's used to pay that is collected within that tax district. Um, but we do want to make sure that. Uh, Everybody's following the state rules. All right, uh, 33131 authorizes Lisa Conbrink to attend the Association of Towns Annual Conference. 33260 accepts retirement of Mich Michelle Orestes, uh, Senior Office Assistant in Town Clerk's Office. Well, that's one of yours, Cindy. Yes, she's been with us for, I want to say, 13 years, maybe, or wow. so. We're going to miss her. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But she's uh, did I say her last name you correctly? Did, yes. Uh, 33017 accepts retirement of Robert Welsh, uh, Deputy Highway Superintendent and Highway. Well, he's been with the town a long time. He's been a long time. time. Um, I'm sure Alex has got to miss him there. a lot. We're all going to miss him. Deputy yeah. Bob. Deputy Bob. Deputy Bob. Right? Yeah. Nice guy. He is. He really yeah, is. really is a nice guy. Yeah. I've always enjoyed uh, dealing with him. 33205 amends the contract with Chief Steven Skrinecki. Uh, 33298 increases annual salary for Paula Godfrey. Legislative aid, 33199 appoints Allison Palmore to senior account, account clerk typist. Uh, Tommy 33072 appoint Megan Zagarelli to legislative aid position in town council office. I'd like to be added to that, please. Uh, 33288 authorizes town personnel to attend the 2020 Association of Towns Annual Conference, uh, including myself. ID 33. Wait, hold on, before, you, before we move on, so, uh, you know, I, I really recommend going to this. This, the the uh, they're very good the association of towns. Um, Rick, if you have the opportunity to go, it's not too late to sign Rick up, is it? I don't think so. Um, yeah, we went through the paperwork I think yesterday on that. All right, so and then yeah, I mean you should go. Yeah, you should definitely. go. You you'll learn a, a lot. Um, I go, and even though I've been doing this for like 27 years now, I still learn things. So I highly I highly recommend going. Um, I don't know if you, either one of you, are able to I'm, go. I'd like to go. I haven't. Uh, I haven't looked at the schedule. Because if we all go, we. I don't know what the date. We might are. not all be in the we, same room together. Yeah. So. <laughs> but we, you know, we, we take different classes. <laughs> we, so uh, we need to So Association of Towns yeah, exactly. is. It's a statewide organization that educates municipal officials. It's a good organization. And there's a, always a lot of things going on at the state level. There are there are changes. There's classes in. 
pretty much everything from you know wireless communications to Land you know board. financial uh, fiscal management protocols uh, you know accounting procedures uh, it's everything you can imagine um, so uh, you know I, I this like a hundred different offerings of these things so. and they have some really great speakers too Senator Schumer always makes a, a, yeah. a, a speech there and yeah. uh, Senator DiNapoli, Senator, no, no, Controller no, DiNapoli. Controller DiNapoli. You better get that straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Tom DiNapoli. So, uh, <laughs> and he's great. He's very fun. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's very good. Tom DiNapoli does That's a nice well job. well retirement funds, too. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, uh, so, so I highly, I highly, re highly recommend going. We will, the town will cover the costs of uh, the dues as well as the hotel. So, uh, but we need to know soon, like, and so we can uh, we can probably amend this on the floor um, to add additional members. Oh, it, it, okay. So it's it doesn't. This is just, just who's, who currently will be. It's not limited to those four. Good job, Deputy Town Attorney. <laughs> <laughs> There's all the time. I believe the town attorney's office has their own resolution. Yeah, I think it's good. Lisa's company exactly. already did hers on this agenda. Okay. Where do you see that? Under name. Name. If you go to any. Oh, any town board member. Don't no. we have a new town attorney on? That's mm -hmm. the next one. Though. That's on the next one. All right. Oh, it's coming. I'm ahead. All right. All right. <coughs> All right, so uh, 33328 authorizes town personnel for the town attorney's office to attend the 2020 Association of Towns annual conference. Wait, I'm sorry, where are you? Oh, look, who's going? <laughs> I thought Good we for you. All right, Christina's going, Kathleen's going, oh, Rich has. Everybody but, uh, but Kelly Ann, huh? Somebody's going. Somebody's got to stay, stay I guess. <laughs> I know. Keep the lights on. In case on. we have a problem. <laughs> oh, and Katie. Uh, no, Katie's going. Kara's not going. I'll be going. coming and going. Kara's not going. I'm not going to go. Um, three, 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 two, three. Oh, is that Julie resolution? Yes. You want to read that? Sure. Authorization for Youth Bureau staff to attend New York State Association Youth Bureau Leadership Forum in Albany on February 3 to the 4th in 2020. 33082, notice of public hearing on the acquisition of lands of Riser Trust, NOYAC, and amends the CPF management and stewardship plan to include the property. Um, Rick, you're feeling left out. You want to read one? Let's go. 3331, 33137, notice of public hearing on the acquisition of lands of Pachulk, Remsenburg, Spionk, and amend the CPF management and stewardship plan to include property. Like to be added to that, please. Done it next. <laughs> Town Board Resolution ID 33245, Notice of Public Hearing to Consider Amending Various Provisions of the Southampton Town Code, including Chapter 330, Zoning 292, Subdivision of Land, and 325 Wetlands to re require a digital submission of particular applications. That goes all the way over to page 104. Yep. Rick, you want to pick up a 104? I'd like to be added as a co sponsor. <laughs> 33049, amend the Town of Southampton Community Preservation Project Plan and CPF Management and Stewardship Plan to include the 3D Associates Incorporated and Cap Tree Group, LLC yes, Properties, uh, Remsenburg Spionk, and Authorized yeah, Acquisition. Yeah. Well, let me rewind. I, I missed, I missed yeah. one. Not you, I did it. Uh, 33060 authorizes acquisition of lands of Daphne Trachis, trustee of uh, Lewis Trachis of Local Trust and Trachis Realty. Anthony Bays amends CPF management and stewardship plan to include that property. That's one of those public hearings. I had Rick read 33049. 33089 authorizes transfer of lands of Suffolk County Riverside pursuant to General Municipal Law 72H. Amends the 72 management and stewardship plan to include that property. I'd like to be added to that, please. Uh, 33305 accepts the file notice of completion 
uh, the final supplemental generic. Uh, did you get that, Sunday? I that did, John's yes. uh, accepts the final notice of completion of the fire, final supplemental generic environmental impact statement uh, related to the amendment of Chapter 330, added Article 32, Section 330-421 through 330-439 as the form-based zoning overlay district entitled Hampton Bays Downtown Overlay District. Uh, you all have that, right? So you've all had an opportunity to read it. So I'm putting the resolution in to, uh, to uh, accept it. If you need to make any changes, we can uh, discuss that. I, I did have a question on the draft the DMB report for the 10-year capital. Okay. It's, it's a draft version. I'm expecting that we're going to get a final version before our meetings. Yes. And with the public. So I don't know. Do we have a schedule on that? I have some. Well, we could accept it in the draft form as the final. We could just take the word draft out. But if we make any changes to it. Is there going to be one more opportunity for that? Because I have some questions. Yeah, we I don't know if you want to do that as a, or I can do it privately. I, it is something that I do want to have accepted to make it official. So there will be a resolution at some point um, accepting the plan. What I was most concerned with, because I, I don't want to tell the professionals what they think we need. I want them to tell us what we, you know, what we need. Um, but if there are factual mistakes, um, I certainly would like to correct them. So I know that uh, Bill Merklin from DNB is meeting with uh, uh, Mr. McEwen and Mr. Cappers and going over the plan. Um, I've only noticed one one error. It's not really an error. It's, it states on Dune Road that there are two restaurants. There are actually three restaurants. Just one is not operating. Um, but other than that, I, I, I haven't been able to find uh, anything that is uh, inaccurate. Um, so Mr. Merklin did say that he will provide the final draft before the public meeting on the 5th. Yeah, I'm just trying to determine if there's a time of input to that because I have, um, I, I was going to either have correspondence with him about that, but I didn't want to well, surprise the board. As you mentioned, he's meeting with the uh, Hampton Bay's Water District Management tomorrow. He's a meeting tomorrow, and he wants to incorporate those. Comments. After that, I'd like the word draft to come off of it. In, you know, so maybe if you can get any other comments to him. That you want to make or be part of that meeting because I'd, I'd like to put it out to the public i'm not yeah, sure the well public has really had a chance to digest right. it maybe put it on our website if it's possible well absolutely sure so that they can read it it's i, th I think it's an excellent report uh it's really thorough it examines all of the uh infrastructure there as well as the operations of the plan um, well i would expect that there would be some amendments to it based on the meeting they're going to have. It. So maybe I should join that meeting and just I could offer it then. If you could. Yeah, that if you, might be If good. you can have John go. If you just let me know. Do you want to attend that? No, I was going okay, to. Okay, great. Yeah. You, but you can. All right. You know, so we'll do it that way. Right. Just so yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, like I said. Agenda, is there any <laughs> other add-ons? That's it. All right. So What's any questions it? about the agenda? Yeah. Is everybody good? All right, Sunday, you're free to publish. Excellent. All right, and we have a patient crowd here scheduled for 10.15, which I suspect we're quite a bit past, a half an hour past. So thank you. So we're going to move on to a presentation by the Sustainability Committee on uh, the noisy subject of gas leaf blowers um, and the not the <coughs> noisy subject of helium balloons. <laughs> yeah, not publicly, yeah. Uh, this is going to be an elevating discussion. I'm sorry. Uh, a lot of hot air. No, it's not actually hot air. It's lighter than lighter air. than air. All right. So, uh, Dieter von Liesten. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, it's uh, my fifth year trying to get his name correct. Um, is uh, going to lead this off, but uh, Tip uh, Brolin is here and. Uh, Glory, Glory and Burke is here, and other members uh, of the committee. Julie Burmeister Julie and Joe Glorioso, and anyone else? Gloria and Burke. I got Glory and Burke. You aren't listening. All people whose names I can say correctly, mostly. All right.
All right. Well, Dieter, go ahead and enlighten us on uh, gas leaf powered, gas powered leaf blowers. Gas powered leaf blowers. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you for seeing us for the Sustainability Committee. My name is Dieter von Leesten, and I'm going to present today the gas powered leaf blowers and what, what to do with those things in the future. As you're all aware, um, gas powered leaf blowers um, are a big nuisance. While they do their job, they make a lot of problems. I gave you the presentations which normally would have put up on a screen, but as the screen is behind you, uh, we have to do by paper. It's, on, it's two sided, so you can just flip on the other side. Um, the Southampton village has led the way in this case, and we are following in this one, so it is not a hard uh, subject to get through. The gas powered lease blower shall not be used from May 20 to September 20. The following restrictions apply when leaf blower operations permitted 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays at 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturdays only, no use on Sundays or federal and state holidays, including by private clubs and municipal employees. No walk behind leaf blowers unless property is greater than one half acre. No more than two leaf blowers in use at the time un uh, unless property is greater than one half acre. Exception for state emergency declared by the town supervisor. Now, that restriction was accepted by the industry and is in for, has been enforced last year in the village. So there should be no reason why they can't accept it in the town. Now, important is why in detail on page four. According to the American Lung Association, one leaf blower causes as much smog as 17 cars emission include, and then there's a whole list of all those terrible things which are coming out of these units. All, the harm, all are harmful to human health, and some are known to be carcinogens. Now, there's one extra little thing which before, uh, after we printed this for you, it's an interesting thing. Um, banning their summer use removes emission equivalent to 20 F-150 pickup driving 10,000 miles per year. So you see these units are really bad. All leaf blowers equivalent to a pickup truck driving 4 million miles here in Southampton. The noise level exceeds levels known to cause hearing damage by a factor of 1 to 1,000 even 50 feet away, effect of operators and the public. Manufacturers recommend protection, eye protection and breathing protection for operators. And if you go around, you see that virtually none of these people who operate them uses any of those protective gears. Elevated noise levels can lead to stress, anxiety, depression, high blood pressure and heart disease. If you go <coughs> to the next page, and that is an interesting page which should be helpful for your decision making in the end. That is the interviews we had with landscapers and what they had to say to this. Um, some of them, and I don't want to read to, to every detail of these, but some of them already use electric equipment. Most of them have no really objections to in the long run change to electric. Their big objection is at the moment when are we going to put in a ban um, as the units, the electric units, are not as powerful as the gas blower units. But that is changing rapidly. And the other excuse in my book is that they always say is, well, the batteries don't last long enough. Well, get a second set of batteries, right? So that's not a problem. Um, so overall, and I attended all the meetings at the village, uh, the landscapers uh, while a little bit of moaning and groaning, that was to be expected, have no real objection to this. And it's, it's been working well <coughs> during the last year. If we turn to the next page, there's other relevant information. And the research which has been done 
uh, in this area shows that complete bands are already in effect. And you can see which uh, states and in which areas they are in effect. And in our neighborhood, uh, in Massachusetts, Connecticut, there is a, a total restriction on these things so far. So um, another big problem is every time a leaf blower is filled, approximately four ounces of gasoline is spilled. According to the EPA, more gasoline is spilled in one year filling small lawn and gardening equipment than was spilled by the Exxon Valdez incident. So the pollution uh, which, which happens to, to these uh, engines is amazing and just awful. Now, in order to get this thing across uh, and educate the public, we put in on the next page a plant educational program. Mailing to town citizens and landscapers explaining the law, periodic press releases as effective date approaches, CTV announcements, and all in six months before law takes effect. Now, we are recommending that a ban should be taking place. We are still researching what be, would be a good date, but we are aiming for 23, 24 latest. 23, 24. <coughs> total ban on, total ban on oh, gas. 2023, 20, 2024? Yeah. So you're saying three years, three or four years from now, a total ban, but you're, you're yes. right now trying to get us to enact the same law as the village? The, the, the village has, yes, but the village has no ban at the moment. They have a ban in July and August. Yeah, so During the summer season. Research. Research. During the summer season, and then it starts. That is right, but they have okay. restrictions on Sundays, the thing, what you laid out. Exactly. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that, that's the law in the village, and it has, didn't cause any problems with the landscapers. They agreed to that. Mm -hmm. So it should, should work for the town as well. Uh, but the total ban on the gas powers, we are doing some more research, and we are coming up with additional numbers for you guys. Uh, the advisory committee recommends prohibiting the use of gas powered leaf blowers during the summer season, as laid out before, restriction on hours of use during the rest of the year. Interviews with local landscapers show support. If law passed, education campaign is proposed before laws go into effect. Next step is considering of complete prohibition on gas powered leaf blowers in Southampton. And you're trying to get this in place for this coming summer, is that? Yes. Okay, because you said six months of education. Well, it's not, it's not quite that anymore. Okay, so... The, 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 re the reason, uh, um, Jay, this, this, this is here for the six months, we tried to do it um, before the election, but everyone said, let the election pass first. <laughs> so, All right, so now you're recommending four months of education. Now, now, now we're doing it <coughs> a little faster. At a six-month pace. <laughs> All right. Now, on the appendix, um, we we show uh, draft law, and this and the draft law um, has been taken off by by others who have the laws in place already, and is is, is a good summary what what could be done to do this. Um, it is all about the two cycle gasoline power. Uh, leaf blowers. Um, the two cycle gasoline power leaf blowers are harmful to the environment and to public and the operator's health. Two cycle gasoline power leaf blowers burn only 60 to 7 percent of the gas and oil mixed used as fuel for leaf blowers due to the inefficient combustion <coughs> process inherent in two stroke engines, resulting in emission of carbon monoxide, etc., etc as laid out before. Smoke shorts the lifespan of people exposed to it on a regular basis and two cycle gasoline powered leaf blowers emit smoke created harbor carbons at a rate far greater than many gasoline powered automobiles. Two cycle gasoline powered leaf blowers often have an operating volume that exceeds decibel levels known to cause damage to the ear and haven't been identified in common contributors to permanent hearing loss. Elevated noise levels can lead to street, anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, and heart disease. 
according to the US Centers for Disease Control, leaf blowers typically produce 90 decibels of noise and exposure to two hours of such noise can cause permanent hearing loss. The town of Northampton declares that it is therefore in the interest of the public and the landscape equipment operators to restrict the use of two cycle gasoline bl uh, leaf blowers in the town. Now, um, I don't think I have to read uh, the law in detail, for that is something which will have to be reviewed by the, by, uh, the legal department anyway, but it is totally based on what has been passed uh, in the village of Southampton. Can I ask you about F, no more than a total of two handheld or backpack leaf floors may be used at a time unless the property that is being cleaned is greater than a half acre? Why would, so you're saying even with the electrics you couldn't have more than two? Operating? Electric, yeah, we're talking gas leaf floors. I mean, it, says, it, says, it doesn't say that, it says. Yeah, but, but all this, the whole law, everything is about gas leaf blowers. Oh, yeah, I see. Okay, the use of it applies it, only yeah, to the use of gas to power to leaf to blowers. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so if you have the electric, you can have then more than two going. Because that's one yeah. of my concerns is if they're not as strong, you might have to have more people in the same amount of time. You know, but you're you're saying with that's just the gas. Yeah. Okay. Just just the gas. Got it. Is that for noise or? Yes. Yeah, it's for primarily no, yeah, for and, noise and, and the extra pollution. For every time you use <coughs> a unit, the particles are spraying up all over the place. I understand, but using two theoretically could get the job done in half the time. I get right. If that makes sense. I'm not disagreeing with it, but you know, right. The so two is, is a lot noisier for a shorter period of time. I, I and the, actually, the overlap of two is a really <laughs> creates a high incidence of air air emissions on on a lot of the, yeah, the all top. the stuff which is blown up, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, other than the leaves. The right. leaves are the most harmless. Blown up. Yeah. Does anybody we we haven't drafted the law yet, right? No. This, so I, no, I, I, I suggested that the, it's the second Julie thing. Right? Yeah, no, we're, 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 we'd like to move forward. Um, I, just one thing I did want to add is that um, this also goes into uh, our uh, 2040 goals of uh, carbon neutrality. The, the amount of carbon emissions and other emissions that come out of these two-stroke engines is really horrendous, as, as Dieter pointed out. It's, you know, it, it's like driving a pickup truck back and forth. What is it? Ten thousand. It's a million miles, roughly, yeah, yeah. altogether. That that you would cut out of that, which would help us with the, our goal. Although it represents a, a smaller percentage of some of the larger things that produce carbon in the town of Southampton, it's a big deal to yeah. to try to reduce this. I've been heartened to watch the, this advisory committee go forward over the last uh, year or so on this subject, um, interviewing, talking with landscapers, dealing with. There's almost 2,000 vendors in the town of Southampton. There seems to be yeah. a pretty positive response. In fact, a lot are already using electric equipment, uh, yeah. just as a matter of fact. And I think a lot of work that Christine had done has sort of led that led them to that realization that this was going to happen. Battery yeah. technologies and uh, noise technologies are being yeah. baited in electric equipment. It's, so what, what, it seems yeah, logical. Christine has done with the quiet community. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, that that, the that goes all, all in hand in hand. So. Dieter, in your conversation with landscapers, yep. are there any designs for those landscaping trailers to have solar panels on them? Do they sell those? The, the town has, has one. The town has one? Yeah. And that's interesting that right, you said that. that. Because so they charge the equipment. Battery right storage, so yeah. that's, you know, it, it, yeah. It, yeah. It, we can do this. We, we, uh, we, we got some interesting feedback that some landscapers who have regular clients mm -hmm. deposit um, extra batteries at, at the clients. So that means they, 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 they then, when they go, they have already a second set re, uh, ready, uh, recharged. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. So some, some are active in it. Yeah, because it, it, it was that they were using two-stroke generators to, you know, to charge batteries, which didn't, you know, it didn't <laughs> work out that well. Or, 
but some of the landscapers have set up their trucks to uh, you know to accommodate that with extra uh, batteries and pre-charged batteries and um, you know we're looking at initiatives to have you know solar charging stations for hybrid vehicles and things like that which just it's it's a yeah. it's it just seems that this is the right time uh, to begin looking at this and I I applaud the incremental approach that you're taking I think it's the right way to go well I think it's a good thing I think uh, you know of the various complaints we receive you know besides traffic and airport noise this is up there probably in the top three um, in terms of uh, quality of life type of noise complaints oh yeah absolutely. Um, so I've been hearing this for years about leaf blowers I thought the village was bold when they did it I didn't know how that was going to work out I know that there's been times in the past where the town this town or other towns have considered it and all the uh, landscapers come out and the towns usually back off because uh, they don't want to you know, hurt the local economy and put people out of business. But I think the technology now has really, has really um, changed. There's good equipment out there. It's effective. It might not be as powerful, but it's pretty close. And the landscapers, I think, are, are, have gotten used to it. The village took that bold step of doing it first. And, uh, and you know, it hasn't put anybody out of business, so I, I nope. think that the, nope. uh, the quality of life in the, in the village the stage, has gone up tremendously. The, the stage has, is set for the town to follow yeah. suit. So um, who wants to put the legislation for it? Uh, I, I plan on doing that. So. All right. So you know, I may co-sponsor. We'll see. Uh, well, I'd love the whole board to, to join in on that. I think well, we're all you know, like mine, so I think it sends a better message. You know, at least let's hear from the community. You know, let's make sure everybody knows about it. Yep. Right. One quick question. Besides the village, is there any other municipality on Long Island that does that now? Or we no. have, is the village is the no. only one? You, 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 you can pretty much be sure that Southampton is always in the lead. Okay. And then East Hampton hasn't done anything yet? East Hampton Village has, but I'm not 100% sure. Well, the, there's 19 municipalities in the state of New York that right. have done could, this. Could you find out for the public hearing if yeah. anyone besides yeah. Southampton yeah. Village has done this? Um, maybe we could try to get somebody from the village. I'm thinking Kim Allen. Well, Kim sits on our sustainability committee, yeah. and actually, actually, a lot of the information I think that was derived came from. See, that's that's the, why I our, attended. I attended yeah. all the, all the hearings uh, in the village on this subject. Right. So that's why, why I've met all these people, and the talks were there, and the complaints. I know all of those, but in 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 the end, they all realized. That they don't really need the blowers at the summertime. Well, we use them too. The town uses the blowers. Yeah, um, but electric. Know. And we use electric. Only, or do we use? Yeah, yep. 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 only electric. And East East Hampton uh, Village has now electric. What about highway? I mean, highway must use the gas-powered ones. Blow sand off. They have the ability things. to if they have a very tough job that they have to do. Hmm. Okay. But I, I think it's a, a good lead by example that our, our parts departments are, are using all electric systems and I, I think that's just a good way to lead legislation like this. So it's, it's one of those things that uh, it, it's, it's already on the run and, and we are jumping on and, and, and can send a strong message to an even broader audience. That's really what it is. All right. Thank you, Dieter. Is there anyone else from the Sustainability Committee who wanted to weigh in on this? They, you know, want to stand on, on not on the helium balloons, but on the, the gas leaf balloons. Uh, the answer on the pickup says 200 Ford F-150 Raptor pickups, 400 horsepower. It's a lot of a lot of. Yeah. All right, thanks, Tip. Thank you, Tip. Anyone else? All right, so should we uh, move on to helium balloons? Yeah. You wanted to float this idea too? Uh, yeah, I was floating this idea. To a lighter subject. Oh, oh. Lighter than air. <laughs> Less noisy. Um, what the committee is proposing <coughs> is to prohibit the sale, distribution, and release 
of any type of balloon filled with lighter than air gas, which practically speaking means helium filled latex and modular balloons. Uh, there's a list here of the municipalities that I was able to find who have done this, mainly Provincetown, Massachusetts, Nantucket, Massachusetts, New Shore, and Rhode Island. And there is a bill in the General Assembly for the state of Massachusetts to do this. So far, it's just in committee. And there was a uh, press release uh, by the mayor of Provincetown that's had this since the 90s. And he said it's working great. They have less litter on their beaches, etc. And I, I think our, our county is also considering legislation of this nature right now, or at least I don't think it's been proposed as a bill, but I think they've formed a committee to discuss I, it. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Now, as to why, uh, we've quoted here the introductory statements made, actually prepared by the town attorney's office when the plastic bag ban went into effect, which is a general statement about uh, the environment and litter, but on the next page, uh, we try to quantify this for Southampton, and I think this is a conservative number uh, because the fundamental number is based on how many of the mylar balloons are released in California, or are I should say sold in California. Uh, so ratioing that to our population. Uh, probably more than 85,000 helium-filled balloons are used once and then discarded in the town. Uh, and speaking for myself, I have inadvertently released more than one. <laughs> as soon as you walk out the store, one of them goes away. Uh, also, they are not, in contrast to the industry statements, really biodegradable. If you go online, you can see examples of where the so-called biodegradability has been tested by simply leaving one out in one's backyard, and years later, it's still there. So this is not going to go away. And of course, mylar balloons are worse. Uh, and we all have seen pictures of dead sea mammals who have ingested these materials because they look like food to them. And I just covered the next slide. Now, to go to the helium part, helium is formed in the earth by the radioactive <coughs> decay of uranium. Uh, it has a half-life of four and a half billion years, so helium is formed very slowly, effectively, it's a non-renewable resource. Uh, these 85,000 balloons would use 430,000 cubic feet of helium a year. Now, helium is valuable. It's valuable in particular for medical equipment because it boils at an extremely low temperature. It's used to cool devices like magnetic resonance imaging, which is its major use. Uh, and I, I, when I was involved with submarine construction, we would use helium leak tests on particularly sensitive joints because helium leaks through basically anything, uh, which is one of the reasons your helium-filled balloons don't take for that long. <laughs> uh, so it's used for welding, cooling devices, etc. Uh, so we went around and talked to the companies in town, the businesses in town, who sell helium-filled balloons, and we got, not too surprisingly, a mixed reaction. Uh, we surveyed 18, 10 responded, four supported the ban, some of whom have already moved away from balloons, uh, six objected uh, because 
they didn't want to lose the business. I talked to the manager at King Collin, for example, in Bridgehampton. Uh, I didn't realize this, but they do sell a fair number of these. And so he said he had no objection, but he did object because they'd lose some business. Now, how much business? We're not prohibiting the sale of balloons. We're prohibiting the sale of helium filled balloons. So uh, how many people would simply buy balloons and blow them up themselves? I don't know, but there will be an impact on the businesses that sell helium filled balloons. And frequently, uh, there were references to corporate, which I've noticed in doing these surveys over the years, there are more and more references to corporate because we have more and more businesses that are part of a national chain. So people won't give you an opinion and it makes the code enforcement, of course, a bit more difficult. They don't want to go against the policy of their employer. Right, their right. <laughs> now we face that with the plastic bags initiative. Uh, but it was halt. We we face we actually faced that with the straw ban as well. And yet I'm finding now that the large corporations and box stores are now using uh, straws, uh, paper straws, where they hadn't before, based on that same argument. So it was a matter of time to it plead existing takes inventory. Time to get the message across. I think we're helped by the fact that the average person that we talk to anyway, is in favor of these things. They want to keep the environment clean, and uh, this is part of it. We did survey West Hampton, Hampton Bay, Southampton Village, Watermill, Bridgehampton, and Sag Harbor. That's where these businesses were located. Uh, we would plan an educational program, same type Dieter described, communications to the citizens and retailers, uh, periodic press releases as you get closer to the effective date, uh, CDV announcements, all in six months, a real six months, before the law gets enacted. So that's what we're proposing. It's not unique, but it probably is unique to Long Island, this would be the first that we know about, and we feel it would be a useful contribution. Let's Not go, only let's go to questions. So, uh, yeah, I think my first question is: Isn't the county considering something? Uh, I don't know whether the county is committed. Well, you said they're, 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 for, they're, they're forming a group to study, so it's still you know. They might. Our goal is always to try to have synergy with what the county does, but I, I feel the county's probably a year or two away if if they're going to get there at all. So it's hard to really make that. that I, and I, I can add that the county had a law in place that you're not permitted to release more than 25 balloons a day. Yeah. Okay. So the next step is, is all that, that can take a long time. Okay, and what about, this is banning the sale of um, lighter than air filled balloons, but I, I know sometimes when you're having a party, you buy the balloons and you buy the tank of helium and you fill up the balloons yourself, so that wouldn't be prohibited? That would be prohibited because the law would say uh, uh, sale distribution, I mean, both for public or private use is prohibited. No, I, I, this, it, the way this is worded, it would not. It wouldn't. You know, you can go out and buy your own helium container and fill it into your house. And you want to go to that right. trouble. Um, I, I should, I should say, you know, just. Uh, to make two points from my standpoint, is, um, and you're a diver as well, but anybody, Christine, on the beaches, it represents a large amount of the of the uh, waste that you find, and particularly underwater, uh, you'll find it a lot, a lot. Uh, so uh, any any even with the ability for somebody to go to Riverhead, buy a, 
or a helium tank to fill up balloons, any any ban in front of that is going to diminish the ability for people to do that. So any reduction, in my view, is a, is a, a, is a good yeah. one, is a positive one. The other point um, was that the impact it does have on, on wildlife is, is huge, and, and it's horrifying to see when you do see it. Anyone, uh, there's a boat who's been out has you know, seen uh, turtles, um, and when you're underwater, you see fish and a lot, a lot of animals that just get impacted by this. It's, it's a big, it's a really horrifying thing to, to witness. And it makes no sense that, that we're doing this. That, that's my perspective. That's what, why I support this, just on that basis alone. But I think there is support for it, um, clearly. People use sell balloons also for other, you know, for scientific purposes or for photography. Uh, they're excluded. Perhaps excluded. Photography purposes, people will, you know, know. You know, but they're tethered. They're tethered. You're putting up a helium balloon and well, well, you've, got a says, string, you've got a string attached to it. It says the provisions shall not apply to balloons released by or on behalf of any agency of the state or the U.S. for scientific or meteorological purposes or hot air balloons that are recovered after launch. So they would not okay. would not apply. Would that include schools, science projects, or science, you know, on the back? Uh, I suppose. If it's, look science, it's a real Yeah, if it's a real science project, if it's just a celebration that the principal left. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, a legitimate <laughs> science experiment, because yeah. you know, as a former science teacher, yeah, you're learning about density, and, it's it's important for people to understand, but I think right. part of that is also responsible education on how to handle that and how to, right. you know, take your experiment and what you, what you do with the helium afterwards and uh, you know not just total. They usually inhale it. And yeah, you know, that's <laughs> what I used to do. And talk with a very high pitched voice. <laughs> Unhealthy. <laughs> the, the plastics. Are very small. Very small. Yeah. The, the plastics that are outside they 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 react with the sun. They decay and they become smaller particles of plastic, which gets into the food cycle and the ecosystem, which eventually gets into us, and, you know, because we are, in fact, all connected. Right. Right? So I, I know plastics in general, you know, that's, that's a larger question than what we're considering here, but this would be included with that. Yeah. Right? Because mylar is a... Yeah. Right. Right. And you're right, it is consumed, and it is in a large part of our food chain right yeah. now. And very often biodegradable means taking big pieces of plastic and it's uh, it's able to go into smaller pieces Make of plastic it. that you can't see but now it becomes uh, you know part of the system they found microplastics as you probably know mm -hmm. the North Pole <laughs> so uh, well, well I, I've had the I, I don't think it's a great fortune but I've had the opportunity to die in the uh, dive in the Pacific almost died in the Pacific gyre uh, and that was 40 years ago and there was great masses, you know, we have these giant, these gyres out in the Pacific that turn slowly about 600 miles across with huge amounts of plastics. There used to be a policy, uh, ships crossing the Pacific would basically dump garbage that way, out of sight, out of mind. And this gyre is, is you know, it's about 10 meters deep. It's, uh, it, it's, you know, it's out there, and we don't see it, but we're certainly the contributors to it. So, I, I, you know, I, I applaud anything that's going to put this, a dent, at the start of a dent into that. I think that as one of the things that pro, the things that happened to me, you know, talking to, to owners of, of shops, was that it was hard to really make the distinction between a helium-filled balloon and an air-filled balloon. Uh, and there, there was some interest, in, you know, and I think in businesses, I think that's, you know, you can, you can do this with air-filled balloons, you can have your parties, you can do that, you, but they don't disappear, they're in your own hands to handle and to deal with. Uh, enforceability is a very, very difficult thing for something like this, so it has to be intrinsic on people to understand their responsibilities when it comes to disposal of plastics. We have a, um, a waste management stream right now that's, Huge, and we're going to continue to deal with these problems. Uh, styrofoam, 30% sure. of it. Um, plastics from uh, latex and those kind of components are, are big parts of that as well. They also have this additional problem of gumming up machinery, and so there's a complaint of that as well. So uh, there's a litany of things you can complain about sure. about the use of these products. I certainly, I, 
appreciate your passion for the environment. I, I remember my passion as a child for healing balloons. Yeah. <laughs> Inhaling them. Well, no, just like it was like to get a helium balloon. That was really exciting. So, you know, I would like to hear more from the public on this, you know, and how it, it changes things. Um, we can use our website, Connie. Maybe we can put a survey out there on the website, or maybe 27 East wants to do it. But we can put a survey, like what it, should the town uh, prohibit helium balloons? It, it, is a, it is a big step. And a lot of people obviously do purchase these things, and they use them for celebrations, primarily you know, for birthdays and you know, happy occasions. And um, you know, I do want to do the right thing for the environment, but I do want to understand how it's going to affect people's lives. So I, I would like to at least use our, our website to do sure. some sort of uh, online survey. And John, if, if this is something you want to move forward as a piece of legislation, um, I would say put the legislation together with the town attorney's office and we can have a public hearing on it and we can get some uh, an opportunity for input. Um, the, the irony is that the county legislature had, in fact, had a ban uh, on helium filled balloons a number of years ago yeah, but they and, didn't do it. and then withdrew it in a change of administration and it's languished ever since. So it actually, the legislation sits there, uh, it's available, so uh, that's something that you know we can look at and yeah. I'm happy to work with, with whoever in the town attorney's office will work on, on that to develop it. We also had changed the definition of a lighter than air balloon as well because uh, the definition that we have in our code is a little, and I've worked with Kathleen to make those changes, so uh, that makes it more conducive. So it doesn't, uh, there is a fire hazard issue with uh, lanterns. using lanterns yeah. and flame lanterns and things like that. So, you know, there's, it, there's a complexity to it, but I don't think it's insurmountable. But ultimately, um, the enforcement is self-enforcement. I don't envision having an enforcement you know, uh, what, balloon unless police? it's blatant. Yeah, yeah, balloon police is not the idea, I think. But. You basically want this to serve as sort of a deterrent, right? That I think pe most people are very responsible to their environment. They recognize the impacts that they're having and want to do the right thing. So if they have a pathway to do it, I think a lot of people take that pathway. Sure. I mean, time. if there's flagrant abuses yeah. and, and there is and I think that was the basis of the county rule to you know to not allow more than 25 balloon releases <laughs> a day yeah. you know, you know, know it's, it's 1201 I can do another 25 <laughs> I, those sky lanterns I, uh, I personally like I've seen them used at weddings uh, you know more to celebrate a a wedding, they're beautiful as they go up into the sky. I've never seen a fire started from uh, under the law. As long as they're tethered, it's allowed. Well, they, and now they're using LEDs. Interest. They're not using open flame, uh, for, for exactly for that reason. So Which there are, are ex exceptions. I'm sorry. There, there are LED lights in them in that right, float yeah. away in some little well, battery in plastic. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, they're supposed to be tethered under the law for <coughs> sky lanterns. Okay. It's supposed to be tethered, and we did modify the law. How did they float for that? How did they float? I don't know. They're helium filled I, with a little LED. Right, right, right. Uh, that may be worse. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, but no. <laughs> maybe. And then, and that's why I wanted to change the law, the definition. I, of I, I think we should do some more research because those sky lanterns. I mean, they're used around the world. And they're they're beautiful, and I, they're paper and metal, they're all biodegradable. And I've never heard of a fire started from one. No, oh, upstate, uh, oh, quite oh, a few oh, fires. Australia. Yeah. It's the yeah. They, they know that some of the fire have started with released balloons. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find like once they go up, they w they don't come down until the flame is out. Mm -hmm. yeah, so but there's. But if they get caught by the wrong wind and downwind. I I released one and downwind came. Yeah. Well, if you do it in a wooded area, it may not get an opportunity to get above the trees. But if you release it on the beach, you know, where you're far away from it. But again, the, the law the requires that they're tethered, not released to the sky. Yes, I, I know. In Germany last week, one of these balloons flew off the edge of the zoo and landed in the burned all the primates which were in the whole river. Is that what caused that fire? Yeah, that caused the fire. From a hill, from a, from, a lantern, from, sky lantern. From a, a lantern. Sky lantern. Sky, sky lantern. Yeah. Hmm. 
Well, I'd be concerned though about the tethering because now you have the weight of the string and the wind that's going to now push the balloon down. It could reach the tree line. Uh, I'm not promoting the law. I'm just saying that's what just, it is. I, I kind of agree with you. I think it's fraught with a whole bunch. But we just wanted to make the difference in the separation that the impacts of plastics, mylar, uh, and latex and the effect on wildlife uh, and the release of these balloons are not recoverable, they end up in our environment is a critical issue. And some of the exceptions as, and they've done a lot more research on this subject than, than you know, we're covering today. There's a, a lot of background information on, on this, but what Skyland was <coughs> one of the issues that came up on how you deal with that. Mylar in particular is a problem in the state no, of I California. I understand that, but the Skyland are paper, yep. very thin that metal. They, the problem piece of Cal cardboard with a little wax on it. It's the problem in California was starting forest fires. Mm. And the same thing could be applicable certainly to setting loose fire and not knowing where it's going to land. And mylar with power lines in particular. Mylar, it's power lines. Yeah. Short circuiting power lines because it's a conductor. And so they literally sued. Uh, the California Utility. I want to say peace. I lived there for so it's long. PG &E. It's not Pacific Gas <laughs> and Electric. Uh, and they sued them because the state accused them of causing these major forest fires. Three and a half billion, I think, was what this utility had paid. Uh, so, anyway, next step would be. Well, John, well, start uh, working on draft legislation for public comment and. Take it from there? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll reserve judgment on the, the helium balloons, but let well, me see what the law looks like and what the public. Stock to... No, I'll probably support it, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. From now on, I'm filling up these Do deal Yes. A lot of hot air. A lot of hot air. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for these guys? Thank you to the Sustainability Committee, to, to TIP and to Dieter. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Bye, Julie. Thank you. Let's see. Thanks. Bye. All right. Let's see what we have for uh, updates. Uh, so, Dune Road, I, I just got texted from the police chief because I wanted to get a sense, but it seems like everything's okay over there. I was actually down there early. Yeah, I got, a, I got a thumbs up, so. Uh, because we did have some high winds yesterday. Yeah, and some, uh, I, I, I went through there to see. Six to nine foot that. seas, so, but apparently it held up okay. So. The wind was coming from the east, so it was, didn't seem to have. Well, from the west, I thought. Um, I'm sorry, from the west. It didn't seem to have such an impact. It wasn't coming from the south. Um, all right, so so just a quick, quick on Dune Road, and I'm trying to get all the facts straight here, too. Uh, the, the federal government they have approved the dredging project. I don't know if you've ever seen these ocean dredges. They're enormous. They move tremendous volumes of sand. They're coming. They're going to dredge out the shoal areas and I guess some uh, of the inlet. I think they're, they were sighted already. I don't think so. Some, somebody had they're in West Hampton. They're, yeah. they're, they're in West Hampton on a different project. Right, but I think that one of them had started to head towards the inlet. So. Really? So there was a question to me as to whether the I, the, I guess uh, Congressman Zeldin issued a press release, but I don't know whether they were opening the bids or whether, you know, Greg, you may know, or whether they were just going out to bid. Do you know which one it is? Like the opening. Okay. opening them. So they did go out to bid at the end of December. That's what I had heard, and I got confused when I got some calls about that press uh, release as to whether they were just going out to bid. So if they're opening bids, then they may have already even awarded the bid. So uh, this is happening quickly then, and uh, you know we have been sort of in this interim phase, just trying to hold, uh, just keep a, a basic berm there to get through at least uh, full moon, high tides, or minor storm events. And uh, you know the county's been extremely helpful. They've been moving sand in. They keep rebuilding that berm. Highway keeps taking the sand that gets pushed onto the road and putting it back. And, uh, you know, as long as we don't have a significant storm event, we'll bridge the time between now and when that dredge arrives, which it, it starts pumping. We'll, we'll be okay. I have worked with the police department on 
another approach if there is a storm like what would we do prior to when the dredge arrives so we have some ideas of assets that we could use to maybe keep a, at least uh, prevent a breach um, but other than you know other than that we're just gonna keep our fingers crossed and hope for the best uh, that we can get through uh, a storm event if it happens um, yeah we're at a full moon cycle right now so it should be downhill from here Good. I don't mean in a bad way. I mean yeah. um, all right, so there's a Drawdown Festival this Saturday, January 11th. I know everybody's scratching their heads going, what the heck is Drawdown? Um, I've got a book on my desk. I wish that the, some of the sustainability people were still here to explain it, but a Drawdown is a, a comprehensive look uh, or system of steps to take to reduce global warming. It's not just about reversing the slow of global warming, but actually um, reversing global warming. Um, so they give they gave me a book that I have to read. Um, but it, it's a it's a big event. Dar Riley is very involved with this. Members of our sustainability committee is involved, and uh, <clears throat> it's happening January 11th at the Southampton Art Center. Show times are. Uh, 11, 1, and 3 p.m. It's a free event. It's open to children over 12 years old. It's a, a really an excellent chance to teach your children about what's happening and how we can all make better choices to improve our climate. Um, there's also live music starting at 5.30, uh, a band that happens to feature uh, Andrea Scavoni as the lead singer and myself on drums, so it's kind of fun if you want to catch me drumming. 5.30. That's the drawdown part. Yeah. <laughs> so that'll, that'll be fun. So we're, we're volunteering our musical talents, so to speak. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, Saturday, again, Saturday, January 11th. <clears throat> uh, renovation work is continuing at the Hampton Bays Community Center. Uh, we're going to be moving ordinance enforcement, the whole public safety division, into that building. I don't know when that's going to be done, but it's moving apparently really well. It's moving along quickly. As you know, too, we are um, searching for a new head of that department. After Steve Troy departed uh, at the end of last year, we have excellent candidates, as I mentioned in my inaugural address, and uh, our job will be to pick one. So we're trying to narrow down that mm -hmm. focus, but uh, um, I'm very happy with the uh, the talent pool that we have for that. So uh, you know, expect the public should expect an announcement probably within the next few weeks. Um, all right, beginning. Monday, January 13th, the South Fork commuter connection becomes uh, more affordable. We're dropping the uh, the $1 um, that we were charging for the shuttle bus. So the shuttle bus is now free. Um, so it's $3.25 each trip. Um, the shuttle buses will still operate. Uh, with, you don't have to pay for it. So uh, we are trying to get more people using the shuttle bus. We had a... Uh, I mean, more people using the trains in general. A lot of people were using the trains but not using the shuttle bus, so maybe this will make a difference. But we do want to encourage people to use the trains. There's a little fear that if we don't get ridership up, maybe they won't continue the service. Um, this is sort of the time of year as we run up, uh, maybe not January, but certainly by March and April, traffic really starts to pick up as people start thinking about getting their homes ready. Uh, for the summer season, so uh, we do see the traffic uh, typically increase, particularly March, you know, April, May, and then the schools let out, and there's a bit of a, a bit of a drop. But uh, I get highly encourage people to ride that train. It's a great ride. It's quick, and will take you to work. Um, so basically, for six dollars and fifty cents round trip, uh, please take advantage of it, and support that program, and, and let's keep it going. I know there's been some discussions with the Long Island Railroad of uh, adding more trains in the future, um, adding some sidings that will allow us to change the schedules a little bit, make it even better for people. Uh, use the East End track. There's only one set of tracks, but once you have the sidings, you'll be able to get 
more of uh, more trains going in, in two directions. Uh, I was heartened that the, the governor's state of the state was talking about uh, MTA funding, not just for Penn Station renovations, but for also for things hopefully like that where we can get the funding to add spurs to, to be able to increase our ability to uh, expand the, the rail commuter hub. So. Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, the governor also talked about uh, I think I have a $4 billion bond for um, clean water right. projects. Mm -hmm. you know, we've been talking about uh, Shinnecock Bay and trying to do some water exchange to help the western portion of the bay. It's, you know, well outside the means of the town financially, but, uh, you know, that could be a source of money that we could use to, to get that kind of water exchange and really get the w western Shinnecock Bay back to health. You know, we've had a lot of impaired waters there, so... Um, there was a lot in the governor's uh, state of the state. I only watched the first half of it um, because I had other meetings. But I, I have the full transcript if you want. Three hundred and forty-seven pages. Well, <laughs> um, it, it, there was a lot in there. It's on YouTube. Uh, uh, it's on YouTube. Is it on YouTube? Okay. <laughs> you know, I had a conference call yesterday with uh, an individual who was interested in Bel Air. This is like the, the third call I've had recently about um, private developers wanting to see if they can buy Bel Air from the town. Um, we're, we're supposed to go through a process, uh, an urban renewal plan. They are all sort of saying, we'll develop it according to the urban renewal plan and go through the, they'll go through the permitting process rather than the town. Um, so I, I need to discuss, we need to have a conversation about this. I talked to Jim yesterday, Burke. Uh, we could do an RFP at this stage and see if anybody wants to buy it contingent upon development either according to zoning or according to the urban renewal plan. We could then review the, the bidders, see what they're offering, um, what they're planning on doing. They, I could tell you all three, nobody has interest in doing a motel. They all have interest in doing a 12-unit um, townhouse development. One of them wants to do it 55 and older, um, which is interesting. And uh, they're, like, they're ready to go. They're ready to make so the town I, I read in the paper, Greg, maybe you can confirm this in your paper, that there was a hotelier who was interested in the old diner in Hampton Bays. Uh, no, I know yeah, about that as yeah, well, too. Yeah. So that that's... And he was talking about, I think, a boutique motel, if I recall, something like that. Yeah, so f I think 50 to 60 units there at that site. Um, the town code doesn't allow, yeah. allow it. Um, we would have to create some sort of zoning to allow it. So my feeling with that was to um, let this uh, hotel person um, describe their concept, do renderings, and present to various community stakeholders, you know, the CAC in Hampton Bays, the uh, Civic, let's get a sense of whether that's something that the community would like to see there. I, I, I know lots of people would like to see the diner back. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of I, agree. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I like how, that diner. I don't know, but there, you know, I have uh, vetted this idea with some about a small hotel there. Um, this person was talking about a Hilton brand hotel. And, uh, you know, the idea that it could provide foot traffic for downtown, that people who would have money in their pockets to shop at the shops and spend money at, you know, go to the restaurants. So it's mostly, mostly been positive. So to me, zoning is supposed to allow the community to grow the way the community wants it to grow. And if that's something that the community thinks would be beneficial, then I think we need to work with the community on allowing that to happen and make sure all the environmental concerns are addressed. Obviously, good, good it would have right. to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> obviously, it will have to have sewage treatment. Right, that's a given. That uh, you know, that the the nitrogen component can't be more than what currently would be uh, would would occur under zoning. <clears throat> Possibly less if we do nitrogen removing uh, sanitary system. Yeah. So. But thank you for bringing that up. So you have the Bel Air. I'm thinking that it may be worth an interim step before we go to the zoning board or we go through the process of changing the zoning here is to see what, if, if a developer were to come in now and go through the process themselves, um, if you guys want to consider that, I would consider that. We would then 
do some sort of RFP, but they would have to develop it according to either the current zoning or what was allowed under the, uh, you know, the urban renewal plan. You yeah, I, I think as you state, you know, uh, I want to hear from the community and see if there's there's a case for that. Um, well, this is for the Bel Air I'm talking about. Oh, Bel Air, I, I was talking about the I've gone back diner. to Bel Air. Uh, yeah, you, yeah, the diner, too much helium. The, the diner will let this developer do his renderings and present it to the civics and, uh, you know, the various groups, a, a Hampton Bay's beautification. With the Bel Air, we're on a course right now. We own it. We're going to clean up the site. We're going to go. Th we're going to go and determine which is the best use: the hotel or the <coughs> townhouse development. Then we're going to go through the permitting process oh, and then auction it. Yeah. But we could circumvent that. We could jump ahead and not have the town go to the zoning board um, by having a developer go through the zoning board. We, as long as we're made whole, you know, we get we get paid. We have one million fifty thousand, one million sixty thousand in the acquisition. We have a few thousand in environmental. As long as we're made whole, if somebody wants to develop it according to that and and go through the process, that was the whole idea: is to take the hotel, which had become blighted, um, unsafe, fire hazard, um, a real you know was sort of bringing down the economic development of Hampton Bays, and get it to be you know, a positive thing for the community. That that was the goal and the private sector wasn't stepping in. Now we've passed an urban renewal plan, signaled to the community, this is what we'd like to see happen, and now the private sector is saying, look, yeah, we would like to do that. I think they're afraid that if we go through the urban renewal plan, they'll have to pay a lot more once we have the permits. Mm -hmm. Whereas if they take it if they go take it now, they take the risk of getting the permits, but potentially at a lower cost. So I like it's, the idea. I think yeah, it's a good I, way to I see agree. how serious they are about this, and that's important. You know, we wouldn't want to change our process, you know, for a buyer who may, not, may or may not be. You know, I'm okay with at least yeah, entertaining. So absolutely. Let me hear. There's, just, here. there's mm -hmm. three of them, and we get to see a, a true look on what they're thinking, and you know, right. we'll get a better idea of what could actually be used on that property. Yep. Yeah, I know one person has done a lot of work already. He's laid out a site plan. 12 units, but it's three buildings, each building with four units. It's a little more expensive to build it that way. There's some benefits because you get better light and more people get end rooms, which are a little bit more expensive. But I know the community was concerned about massing. They didn't want to see one big building. Right. Right. So if you have three buildings, that might that might be nice. Um, well, it sounds so, like there's an appetite on the board to at yeah. least hear what, what they have to say. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I'll invite them. Invite them to a work session, and then we'll decide if we want to do a, a formal RFP. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Okay. Um, or maybe we should just jump to the RFP and let let them respond, and we'll entertain those proposals out of work session. Which way, cart? Which is first? Right. The, the plan. Yeah. We can't just go to one builder and say you can you can buy it. We have to right. do a competitive process. So, I think the plan, the RFP. Well, I think you you if you're going to go that way, you should at least have a draft RFP it, uh, it ready. Why don't you have maybe Janice come in and talk about the potential under both scenarios, yeah. so the board's fully educated on the potentials, and then you can decide to go out for an RFP at that point and see what developers come back. Okay. Because after seeing that, he, you know, he may have a slightly different take on what he that might present to us. That way you're not just talking to one developer who's presenting. Yep. Okay. Well, let's see. Let's take it to Genesis. Genesis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so uh, I have a note here about Senator Laval. I, I think announced already yesterday, right, Tommy John? Did yeah, he did. He's uh, not going to be seeking another term after... Is it 44 years or 46 years? I can't remember. Um, Currently it's 43. This is his 44th, and he will be finishing out his term. Um, so, uh, you know, we have had the honor of working with Senator Val. I have for 27 years in one capacity or another, uh, certainly 20 years in elected office. Um, and uh, yeah, I got to know his wife, Penny, uh, who's worked in... Uh, real property at the county, but, uh, you know, uh, Senator Laval was instrumental in the CPF program. 
he's uh, you know he he was helpful to us with the uh, with the rail service. He's uh, gotten the town so many different grants for you know paving roads and building bridges and um, he's been a real leader on the environment and uh, it's quite a run he's had at the state senate. That's uh, 44 years is. Uh, uh, you know, is a lifetime for many, and uh, you know he's been really involved with education. Uh, uh, education, I think he's chaired the uh, state education, higher education committee for a long time, and um, he was a co-sponsor of the Pine Barrens Act um, back uh, under Mario Cuomo, and uh, it, then it passed, I think, under Governor Pataki, but. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Senator Laval has been great for me to work with. So uh, I think he has for all I, of us. I, I I wish him the best in his retirement. Um, we're gonna have big shoes to fill over there. Um, I, I know uh, it'll be a you know I'm sure, I'm sure we'll end up with a great uh, a new senator. I know people have expressed interest in uh, serving in that capacity, but I do want to thank. Uh, Senator Laval for for 44 great years of service to our community. Yeah, I'll let go of that. I, you know, in, in particular is um, the way he and the assembly feel have worked together, particularly to help us. Has just been. I, I don't think we really appreciate that. What what a good relationship that is. It has, and that relationship has been a good relationship for the town of Southampton, and um, I you know I hope it continues. Um, in some capacity in the future. So, my, my personal my 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 personal thanks to Ken for um, the gentleman that he's always been, and uh, he's supported everything that I've ever talked to him about. So I can't say can't say enough good things about him. Yeah. I wish him luck. I do. <coughs> he and Fred have made a good team, yeah. and his legacy is going to last for for generations. The, the accomplishments that yeah. Senator Laval has has made. You know, they have been a good team. Uh, two things, particularly at the, the uh, Tickborne Resource Center at Southampton mm -hmm. uh, Hospital. You know, it really is the model in the state for uh, awareness of tick-borne illnesses and how to counteract that. Senator Laval and Assemblyman Thiel were key in getting that funding and getting that program off the ground. And then, of course, there's Stony Brook Southampton. Yeah. Um, you know, without Senator Laval. Um, we might be talking about rezoning that area, or you know, so right. that might have yeah, gone we, a different we way. Lost that, yeah. And uh, it was his leadership and, and Fred Thiel's leadership that, that really, really, uh, you know, made that happen. I met him first when I was in eighth grade on a school trip. He spoke to us in the gallery of, of the Senate, and he also spoke at my high school graduation at Sag Harbor. So he's certainly been in the community and yeah. part of the community, the events and things. Yeah. And not just the campus, not just the campus, but the hospital itself. The hospital he's itself. been tremendous, tremendous mm -hmm. supporter of the hospital and done a lot of work on, uh, you know, women's health issues. And, you know, he's, he's got a, a long legacy of service to the community. I remember when I was East Hampton supervisor and I was trying to preserve a piece of property, about a hundred acres on the ocean. You can imagine how hard that was. A property called Shadmore, um, which was going to be developed with homes. And you know, this was the early days, uh, maybe even pre, hmm. sort of, sort of the beginning of the CPF fund. We had very little money, um, and you know, the county wanted to help, but I, I still needed seven million dollars to make it happen. Now, back then, seven million. It was the whole price was about. 17.6 million if I remember and uh, trying to piece that together and I needed help from the state and uh, you know Ken really came through um, along with uh, uh, you know Assemblyman Thiel and uh, Perry Durier at that time who was former assembly leader uh, everybody was making calls and trying to get uh, the uh, the state to, to chip in and, and today it's a state park, a beautiful state park, popular um, with, you know, lots of people go there and walk those cliffs and see those clay uh, formations. And it's beautiful if you ever get a chance, but uh, Senator Laval was really helpful. Um, lots, lots of things through my career where he stepped up and, uh, and, and helped with. So uh, thank you, Senator. So, it's interesting, you know, you were talking about how you met him, and I, I, I always associated Ken, associate Ken with schools, and there's 
uh, when we judge science fairs or ribs and so the small schools in these areas he he was always there mm. you know and would and I like the style that you get things quietly done without a lot of fanfare and he has done that consistently throughout his career and you know I hope just because he's leaving office that he doesn't continue to help influence um, other political officials and, and help to get these the things done that, that we all believed in so yeah. but I, I, I do I, I just love that the style the quiet uh, unassuming way of getting things yeah. done is really yeah really he's a gentleman yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we wish him well. He's still, still be around. Still be around. And, uh, and the best in it, your retirement can. And uh, same, you know, to, uh, best wishes to Penny as well. Um, you know, that's, you know, I guess when you're married to uh, somebody, a state senator or something, you don't get to see them very much because they're a public servant and, you know, they're busy all the time with events and things like that. So they get to enjoy each other yeah. a little bit, which is a good thing. All right. Um, any other updates? Now, Connie, we had the uh, we had the New Year's celebration. Um, her was not as well attended as we were hoping. No. So maybe next year we'll have to rethink things a little bit. Um, well, we kind of think that the um, position of New Year's Eve being right in the middle of the week and schools having two weeks vacation. Factor, a lot of people want to buy. Yeah. So. It could be, you know, Greenport does a first night, which is also the same kind of thing. It's alcohol free, I believe, but they do a lot of like ice skating and all. It's like all kinds. It's downtown. It's really sort of festive. And um, I mean, you know, maybe we should rethink the venue a little bit to make it more fun. I don't know. Well, we definitely are having a. Uh, a Monday morning quarterbacking meeting on this. So we will be looking at future events also, maybe one in the summer. So Did, was there a band? Maybe we should get a band going. We had the quiet disco, which was really nice. It was really good. Have yeah. you ever tried it with the headphones? It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, that's no, almost it. an oxymoron, <laughs> quiet disco. I, was, I forgot what you, were, what you meant by that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people love those. Yeah. Everybody hears the same music, but if you don't have the headphones. Oh, really? And so you could be dancing to 70s music, or you could be dancing to Top 40. And people, when they have the headphones on, they forget they have them on. And they're singing, and they're all singing off key. So when you're not wearing the headphones, when you're listening to all these people dancing with the headphones, it's, it's quite fun. <laughs> I didn't realize there's three different channels. So yeah. one person's dancing fast, and one person's dancing slow. Yeah. That would confuse me. And for example, somebody was dancing to YMCA and they were doing the YMCA. Somebody else was dancing to slower music. It's fun. Okay. We all go to our own tune, I guess, right? That's right. Or <laughs> drummer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a couple things. Uh, on Friday night, the Rotary Club of Southampton is going to be sponsoring a bingo night at uh, Southampton High School. That's tomorrow night. And of course, board members are encouraged to come. Jerry, I know you've gone to these things in the past, and uh, please come. Uh, all the proceeds are going to go to the Southampton Animal Shelter. That starts at 7 o'clock over at the high school. Bingo. It's fun. Bingo. And, Bingo. Uh, we're having a youth and government meeting tonight featuring Mr. Volger. Um, he's going to be working with the kids. He, too, runs a youth and government uh, group. Uh, this is at Sam Riches. He's really great. He's a veteran, Iraqi war veteran, teacher, awesome guy. And that starts here at 6 o'clock. Here. Here, in this room. Lower left. Anything Can't else? get any lower without a shovel. <laughs> John, you got anything? I'm good. Uh, Rick? Good. I will, you know, I'm working on committee liaisons, assignments, so... Uh, um, I, I hope in the next week to be able to announce that so you guys know what I've assigned you to and that will affect which resolutions you read. I'm sure. sorry you didn't have too many, you know, anything with your name yet, but uh, by by the next agenda we'll, you will have some that uh, you are the uh, the main sponsor for unless you choose not to. So, uh, but uh, I'm working on it. And I, I try to, it's not, it's not easy, it's one of the roles of supervisor trying to figure out 
you know, who should liaison to, to what. I try to figure out what your interests are, what your talent set is. Um, and, you know, and sometimes everybody wants the same things. Um, some people want more than others. So uh, Julie's not here, but we're, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. So I've, I've talked with all of you and I will continue to talk with all of you. And, and then uh, sometimes I'll, I can do call liaisons. And the way I look at it is everybody's invited to everything. Um, if you're not liaison to a particular citizens advisory committee, you can go anyway. Uh, just we just can't have three of us in any one place without notifying it as a town board meeting. So we're we're very mindful of the open meetings law. So we'll uh, you know I'll do my best, and uh, sometimes you might not get everything that you want. Maybe the following year you will, kind of thing. So all right. Um, okay. Any anything else? All right. So we do have executive session. We have personnel matters uh, to discuss, and uh, yeah, it's all all sort of por personnel. Oh, there's confidential legal, and there's also acquisitions. So uh, I, I'm Lisa's out to today six. So I'm not sure if. Uh, all right. Unless Jim is prepared to do it, yeah. so I'm gonna say we will talk about acquisitions. In, uh, in executive session. If we don't talk about it, that's okay too. And then confidential and personnel. So I'll make a motion to end our work session and go into executive session on those items. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.